Oh, welcome to Saturday morning. Gus, hope all's good. Liking the look of your comeback. Starting to look very strong, sir. Happy Saturday. Someone let me know if the sound's all right. Nathan, Bullet, how are you going, sir? Is it a day off or are you in between um, customers at the moment? Good to see you. Hope all's well. Sound is good, my word. That's a first. Ryan, how are you, sir? How was your exam? Did it go all right? Let me know. Do you have a little bit more time this weekend to devote to the cycling and maybe an Everest attempt on the horizon? Hi, Agnes. How are you? Good to see you. So today, in between customers, five minute break. Oh, I'll make the most of it, Bullet. Looking forward to getting back down to Minehead and Exmoor. Really missing it. Um, but, you know, I'm sure that will come soon. Well, freedom of movement allowing. So how's it going, Gus? I was saying your comeback is starting to look quite strong now. Strength picking up nicely. And I hope all's well elsewhere. Hi Ian. How are you, sir? Good to see you. Now I've had a rest week this week. Um, well, I say rest week, i.e. two full rest days and then just a little bit of 20 minutes zone two high intensity. And one at Lavarat polar, polarized training, which was very short. And I cut it short. So I'm feeling refreshed, but we'll see how, see how the legs are. The weight is the issue. But with the kilometers coming up, Goose, um, the weight will come down without much effort in the kitchen, I guess. Oh, I'm glad to hear that, Ryan. Um, fingers crossed that you get the results you deserve. You worked hard for it. <laughs> so today is basically three laps of the UCI circuit in Innsbruck. So three of the leg snappers, and then they call it an after party, but it's um, the Ford KOM at Innsbruck. So it's basically three little punches and a 20 minute FTP for me. You got crazy punch, nice. Oh, big game more. Yeah, I mean, I've got to be honest, Gus. Ed's in this race, as is Chris Garanet. Chris. Morning, sir. Hope you're well. Um, Chris is racing here in the A's. Ed Laverack's in it. I'm not really looking to stay with the very front group. I had a difficult time last Saturday. I'm hoping the rest pays off, but I'm going to kind of race, you know, as hard as I can, but not try and match those that are clearly much, much better than me. Oh. Yeah, I'll try and hang on. <laughs> That's normally the game plan until I break. Yeah, but equally, I'm trying to stay a little bit fresh because um, we've got a little hill climb next weekend. I'm trying to remember the name of it. Bear me a second. I revised the name of it before I came. And then uh, Farnham. Farnham Hill Climb. Now, Chris Garinet, I think, is going to apply to go. Paul Hamblett has applied and Giorgio Capella Racing has also applied. He's got a YouTube channel um, and we'll see if we get in. It'll be the last one of the season, 1.4 kilometers. It's got a nasty little section of kind of 10 to 15 percent. Um, but I think I'm past my peak. Hi Simon, morning, how are you? Little Ian, how's it going sir? Good to see you both. I'm just saying, the game plan as always is try and hang on. But we have Ed Laverack and Gus is saying, um, where was it? Vigo Moore, Vigo Moore, 16 year old, 5.6 watts a kilogram for 20 minutes. I'm not gonna try and stay paced with that. Yes, Ed, I know you missed the hill climb, sir. Um, but we're enjoying watching your journey to 10 watts a kilogram for two minutes. Oh, and by the way, that training that you put on the live stream yesterday, that, is, that was sensational. 
when I did that training I missed off the one minute segments which is the big ones so there we go hi Oslo good to see you uh, Chris from Scots and Cycles nice to have you on board sir Lee thank you very much well I hope I go a bit better than last week we'll see um, last week I can confirm the battery was running out on the um, on the what's it called the uh, the heart rate monitor um, that's why I got up to 200 and then down to 120 albeit the heart rate was very very high when I quit when I quit when I kind of stopped trying to stay with the bunch I didn't quit <laughs> um, are you in this one? Chris nice let's have a look So we've got Chris Garinet and Chris from Squats and Cycles. Where are we going? Swift Companion. Ed Laverack is warming up now. So Ed will be off in the distance so you can see what the sharp end of the race looks like. And you can see what the less impressive end of the race looks like with me. Cohen, how's it going? Good to have you on board sir, thank you very much. And appreciate everyone's support for the videos recently, um, the, the vlog videos. Been really pleased with so many lovely comments and interactions. It's been really a real pleasure, so thank you very much. Giorgio, how are you sir? I was just saying we've all entered, Chris Garinet, myself, you, Paul Hamblet, for the Farnham hill climb. Fingers crossed we get in, I think we know in a couple of days. And um, very powerful race you put down the other day sir, 329 watts, 4.9 watts a kilogram for 20 minutes, that's huge. Oh Chris from Australia, how's it going sir, good to have you on board. <laughs> How did I get the saddlebag on? Um, I'm, I'm not sure what you're referring to in my saddlebag. What was, um, oh sorry, yes I know exactly what you mean now, yeah, on Scott's video. Yeah I managed to get that on. It weighs about a kilogram, I reckon. Not quite, half a kilogram. Really um, detracts from the speed uphill. Hiya, Jerry. Thank you very much, I appreciate that. Hoping to enjoy it, and have, hopefully perform a little bit better than last time. And you've got um, a cyclocross race this weekend, haven't you, Giorgio? Check out Giorgio's build-up for his cyclocross races, but also he's on a, a slight weight loss phase. Um, ahead of this hill climb event. And it's got down to about 67 kilograms, so around about 70 in short order. So nice one, Giorgio. That's Giorgio Capella Cycling on YouTube. Michael, taking the kids to football. Nice one, I hope. Well, I hope they do well. How old are the kids? Is it chase the ball or is it actually quite serious? Oh, Agnes, it's your birthday. Agnes, happy birthday to you. A lady with a beautiful heart and a big heart that's able to go 160 kilometers or more for the Imperial Century. Nice work, Agnes. Hope you have a good day. Hope the weather's out and nice for you to maybe enjoy a cycle outside. What's that? Oh, you caught this joke. Jane's shouting at me. I missed it, of course, Agnes. You're quarantined indoors. My apologies. I'm so sorry about it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, another exquisite faux pas from me. Yeah, where I failed the, Mac the McCarthy special. Yeah, I will retry it, Lee. I think that's a really good idea. The McCarthy special, for anybody, let's go to the actual event. For anybody that doesn't know it, the McCarthy special is probably one down from the workout that Ed live streamed yesterday. It's disgusting. I don't know if it is, even is one down. It is one of the most intimidating workouts on Zwift. I need to be a bit stronger to have a go at that, I think. Draft properly for the first three laps. Yes, Gus, I will. Lord of the statistics. Good to see you, sir. How's Sweden? Ooh. I'm going to do the last of my thumbs up to people before I concentrate. Oh, I've still got three minutes, sorry, it's not quite as... Yeah, drafting properly. I'll do my best. But, objective really of today is to have three nice punchy climbs out the saddle, up the leg snapper. 
Hopefully I'm still in the bunch for then. Um, drafting. Yes, definitely trying to draft Gus. I certainly won't be um, trying to get near the front. Well, we'll see. I, you know, I won't try and get near the front, but we'll see if I do it by accident. Um, and then we've got the basically 20 minute FTP at the Ford um, KOM. I'm, I'm gonna ride that to my own pace. Um, not feeling strong enough to kind of probably stay with everybody. Because I know if they go off at like five and a half, six watts a kilogram, I'll just blow completely. And then it'll be just a procession up the hill at a kind of 200 watts. Carlo, thank you very much. I appreciate your best wishes and good luck. I'm gonna need it today. I'm feeling really nervous today. I think it's because I'm having to trust the fact that all the extra rest and recuperation will translate to got a little bit more fitness today. It's been rainy and windy for a couple of days. Boy, oh boy, speaking of wind, what about all the crashes at the Giro d'Italia? Um, the helicopter and then the crosswinds, my word. Poor cyclist there. Scott, how's it going? Do you need any more footage from me? Um, I've been so busy at work, I forgot to get onto that. Let me know, let Jane know and we can download something. Martin, hope all's good, sir. Looking forward to racing you in a flat. I'm gonna have probably a little phase of changing up my training a bit after this hill climb. Um, try and build a bit more power maybe add a bit more size over the winter just to be a bit more explosive I've been a long time now in a 62 to 63 kilogram range hey Graham thank you very much for joining and nice work sir on your recent kind of zone 6 training session the 30 30s I know you're getting back into that good to see you but it'll pay off all for all the sweet spot if you drag up that zone 6 thank you very much Mick I appreciate that I definitely need a bit of luck today. And so, there's not tons of us here. Oh, Ed's saying fresh fill. I need to find a way to reply. How do I reply? Um, let me go to uh, message a group. There we go. <laughs> I can't multitask. See, look at, look, at, look at the confidence in my reply. Hopefully, Ed, please. That really sums me up. Andrew, thank you very much. Yeah, I'm riding with Ed, um, behind him for a bit, and then a long way behind him thereafter. I think that's probably how I would describe riding with Ed. 16 minutes of me eating berries. Oh, nice, Scott. They were beautiful blackberries down there in the West Country. Right, I've got to concentrate. Hi Theo, thank you very much. Appreciate you, you stopping by, that's super nice of you. David, good to see you sir. Hi Paul's good, I saw a nice, what was it, 130 kilometers at zone two yesterday. You are a glutton for punishment. I did 20 minutes. Okay, Gus, get on my case if I don't draft appropriately. Chris Garinet, there you are. Nice one, sir. Sporting the same jersey. I love your style, Chris. Now, Chris showed me the kettlebell swings to warm up the glutes and the hamstrings and develop strength there. They're gonna come back into the strength program. Because I now have access to kettlebells at my gym. Check out Chris's Instagram. Chris Garinet Performance. 
He put some good stuff up there. Yeah, RIP the Tesco bag. Too rightly. It was good though, wasn't it? That was, I was really proud of that innovation. That's my gift to the fitness industry. Glad to hear it, David. I bet you are knackered. Zone two for that long still creates a lot of training stress. I'm sure, Agnes, with all the fitness you do, you look and feel like you're in your 40s. Hey, Sean. <laughs> yeah. Good to have you, sir, on board. That is, sorry, faux pas. You just finished the Alp as well. David, David, David. You're racking up the TSS. Sit on Ed's wheel, yes. Uh, where is it? Sorry, I was losing concentration. Just do that. Yeah, that's very easy to sit on Ed's wheel. And it's gradually, there he is, in all his glory. Mr. Ed Laverack. Of the 28 inch waistline and gargantuan FTP. Oh, thank you very much, Stephen. We check out Ed as well. You can dual tap. Oh, I'm off the front, Gus. Sorry, that was, that wasn't deliberate. I promise you. Ramped up the volume, nice. 15 hours. You're going to be strong, David. One second. So, where Ed's power profile will be kind of grey right now, mine is green. Hi, Ashley. Thank you very much for your good wishes on Strava yesterday. Hope you're well, sir. Oh, Ed's bridging. Silly of me. Drafting skills, not exactly on point, Gus. Hi Kev, how are you sir? Thank you for joining. How is the zone two high cadence work going? You were saying you were struggling to stay stable. I do, Stephen. I've got some very nice quality. Sainsbury's Taste of Difference bread. And some of Scott's better half, the power behind the Comhunt throne. Natalie's mum's rhubarb jam, the last of. I went through it super quick. Heart rate is really high. Not quite sure why so high. Oh, that might be the heart rate monitor. Yeah, as I say, it didn't feel like the 180s. <coughs> the legs, not quite sure. And I don't think they're tip top. We'll see after the first leg snap, but they didn't feel great in the warm up. Yeah, I'm having a ride outdoors as well tomorrow, David. Got some filming to do. Weather looks all right.
Right, so leg snapper, I think, around the corner. No, I wasn't 180, Lord. I will be in a second. Watch it soar like a phoenix. I really hate this. That's why I'm doing it. <sighs> Cheers, Ian and Sean. I need to recuperate. Yep, he's a lot better than me, Mick and Gus. <laughs> Cheers.
Cheers, Ed. Oh. See you with the mystique, Laverack. I think he's giving the others a head start at the 4 KOM. Oh. That was proper hard. Thank you, everybody. Yeah. The idea is to have three like that and then see what we've got for the forward. But yeah, the others were too strong for me, the two at the front. Appreciate you staying back, Ed. Thank you. <laughs> that is very true as well. Ed has much better genetics. 100% in. Thank you, Michael. Uh, definitely time to let Ed drag us back to the um, snapper. Whew. Cheers, Simon. Good luck with it. Kicking the board around the house. That's good. Plenty of energy. I love that. Um, I don't keep track of all the names, David, but I'll take your word for it. I know, it would have been insane, wouldn't it? You would have never thought this kind of an experience is possible. Imagine what it'd be like in 15 years. Yeah, Gus's numbers are looking good on Strava, David. Whew. Yeah, this isn't a vintage legs day, that's for sure. In answer to the question, Ian. The perceived effort is a lot lower with the cadence high. But I've got a little couple of videos exploring impact of high cadence on my personal pedaling efficiency. Wow. David, that is epic power. Well done, sir. You're getting very strong. Under Mr. Lavarak's wing. All right. Hey, John, how are you? Adam, Mr. Ruda, how's it going, sir? Hey, you both well. Yeah, I mean, Ed's polarized training, if you recover properly, is exceptional. I love the trainings, but also the progression is really, really motivating. But the recovery is required. Yeah, appreciate your support, John. So my weight is up at 63. I added a kilogram during my low intensity week. 
That's just less calories burned. I'm sure it'll come back down. I was 62. That's what I mean, Gus. With extra training, the weight will fall off. I'm 170. Um, I had a bike fit, a retail bike fit for that. 700 height on the stem. I don't have the handlebar slammed either. Ed did a little video on why he's raised his for the hill climb season. But having the handlebars a little bit further up, you can still be aero, my elbows tucked on the hoods. But it opens up the hip, hip angle and you can get more muscles involved and more core stability. Right, concentrate now. Dear Lord, make me truly thankful for what is about to come. after all, while it's not very pleasant at the time, this is why we do it. Deep breaths. The level of concern is at DEFCON 1. 18 hours ago. Good luck with your cyclocross this weekend, Giorgio. Hopefully see you at Farnham Hill Climb. Pain face is about to be deployed.
to Ed has a workout called Race Starts, where you go 30 seconds really hard, max effort, 150% or more of FTP. One minute at FTP. That was more or less a race start, as was the first one. Oh, yeah, Eddie, head's broken three watts a kilogram. Genius, love that. <laughs> yeah, that's so funny. Yeah, I'm gonna sit in the wheels now. Well, that was emotional. Looks like they don't really want to do any speed. They're spoiling my average power. Not Ed. Yeah, in the wheels. Yeah, you're right, Ian. Sorry. I'm in space cadet. Right. Carbohydrate time. I've had 50 grams of fast digesting carbs before starting this. I've got another 45 in that. And as always, it's on hand, but I'm hoping I won't need it. Hey Niels, thanks for joining. Oh Georgia, I thought you had left. Yeah, heart rate's come down all right, mate. But the pace is quite comfortable. Well, as you can see, I'd say it's quite stately. I could kind of do a royal wave to the uh, virtual crowds. Still on the left. There we go. I've got one more hill snapper to go, Michael. Or leg snapper, sorry. So Georgia, are you taking the van to this weekend cyclocross or will it be a stay over? Will Sarah have to endure another night in the van? Giorgio has kitted his van out to enable him to stay at all the racing venues. It's quite funny. They were meant to be in Italy on honeymoon, but Sarah's having to make do with van life. But she has treated herself to a new little Fiat 500 a bath, and they're pretty cool. Hey Richard, morning to you sir. A local one. It's a local cyclocross for local people. Outsiders are not welcome. I think Farnham's quite local to you, isn't it, Georgia? Well, I say, like, you know, it's like a 50 minute bike ride away. Yeah, Fiat 500s, how cool are they? Especially the really old ones. But in a bath, I mean, my word, those things are rapid. There's a hill near Farham, let me a second, that if we get selected, one second. It's called Pride of the Valley Hindhead. Do you know that hill? It 
It does. It does. I saw lots of them in Italy. I love seeing them. It's like an old mini. When you see one of those, they look tiny. Like Noddy's shoe. Right, let's ramp it up. It's a good climb, is it? Nice. Well, after the hill climb event, I was thinking we could kind of, less than six of us, less than six, could meet up there and have a max effort up that. It doesn't look awful in terms of gradient. Okay. Come on, Philip. I was hoping he would hold the wheel. So to the sound of matches being unnecessarily burned, here we are. Nice work, Michael. 20%, 20 watt increase in FTP. Respect, sir. What was the race, Michael? That is incredible. What kind of training have you been doing to get that? Super interesting. I right, calm, Philip. Settle. No talking. Nice one, John. Respect, sir, as well. 14 is epic, too. And you had more in the tank, I know. You said you couldn't, you said you could have drained it a bit more. Nice analogy, Ian. Let's try and unleash a few.
Hey David, good day sir. Sorry, Lord, what was that? Try not to drop anybody. Okay, yeah, good point, yeah. I wasn't trying to drop people. I was just trying to get the training benefit of three anaerobic efforts for hill climb on Sunday. Farnham, not this Sunday, next one. Yeah, now, now it's time to pamper myself, carb up. Oh. No, I was trying to get a training benefit like 450 to 500 watts at the leg snapper and then for the first two reps convert it into a race start where you drop back to threshold nice one Michael were you in a slightly different saddle position? Have you done strength training or anything like that? Or have you done more training out the saddle, low cadence, anything like that? I'd be interested to hear. You can teach your body to get much more efficient at using different muscles. That's why I love strength training. Hey Paul, thank you very much for joining. Yeah, this is a lovely jersey. It's the coal lightweight climbers one. It is perfect for indoor work. I'm a squirrel, yeah. Jane, my Jane, she runs like a squirrel like that on the treadmill. Or like a little Tyrannosaurus Rex. It's, well, it's really funny. Although that said, when I run, I flare my legs to the left and right. It looks quite poor. Right. Ford KOM coming which can only mean one thing. It's time for me to do my best to replicate the mode they call Ed. Let's get the last of the carbs down. I'm going to try and stay seated on a climb, keep the cadence as high as possible. I'm going to be forward on a saddle. I'm going to try not to have my toes pointing down, which many of you have pointed out isn't 100%. I'm going to kind of try and stay with this group. Yeah, increase the cadence, definitely, Michael. Spinning on Zwift helps you get back in. That was a big sort of focus of that training video, how to race faster on Zwift that I did. Definitely respect for finding that out, sir. You've got to feel it for yourself. <laughs> but when the gradient's steeper, I definitely find indoors or outdoors, I've got to get out of the saddle. Training difficulty for me is 100%. I believe, having ridden a lot of climbs now on a 32 cassette on the back, in Italy and recently on a Canago in Minehead and Exmoor, 
that in real life when I hit a 10% or more grading, really nine, I'm out of the saddle a lot. On Zwift, at 75% training difficulty, you can spin. Yeah, you get, it's inevitable that you get more stompy with your pedal uh, stroke. You've got much more of a dead spot at the bottom. It's harder to put it round, but you can deploy more absolute power, I believe. Obviously the legs and hip angle is very advantaged, but you need core strength and arm strength to hold it for any time. Keith Robertson has a sort of drill up out the Zwift where you stay nice, steady, upper zone two, lower zone three, out the saddle the whole way. And um, I found those quite handy a while back. It feels good. Why am I going off the back here? This is not what I ought to be doing ahead of the 4 km. I'm a real prize idiot. Thanks Ed for slowing it down. Hey Alex, thanks for joining, how are you sir? Yeah, I will. Neil San. Good to see Chris Pritch streaming again. He promised he would a week ago today and he delivered. Here we go. The legs are warming to their task. Aiming for 280 to 2 to 300. And then we'll see how the nervous system goes. Cheers, David. Thank you for joining, appreciate it. Deeper here, so investing a little bit more. Ride the climb, that's what Ed says.
Ed's struggling to go slow enough here.
Cheers all. Cheers, Scott.
Oh. Wow. One second. Oh. Maybe just get a leg spinning. Oh. Out here. Oh. Oh dear. That, thank you for all the support. I saw people saying don't tow them to the line. Equally I know that if I back off and sit in, I just get destroyed in the sprint. Maybe not on an uphill finish, but Ed said at the very beginning in the, uh, the Zwift comments, fresh today for and that's, the, I guess, the point of Lavarette coaching. When I haven't listened to Ed, and I felt really good because, sorry, let me regroup. Oh. The point about Lavarette coaching, Ed Lavarette, of the 28 inch waistline and gargantuan FTP, he very quickly learns what the rider can cope with in terms of training stress and where they're weak and where they need to work hard. And for me, he identified the need for polarized training. Lots of zone five and six efforts, but to do that well, you need to recover. So you need plenty of zone two low intensity days, and I just do 20 minutes. And I also take normally two full rest days a week. Now, when I was in Exmoor, because I had the opportunity to ride in such beautiful countryside, I don't often get that. I went very hard for six out of seven days. And then I tried a Zwift race on the Sunday and the wheels kind of fell off. But I listened to Ed this week and I did just one hard session and it was very short in duration, but just kept the heart being used to working hard. And I had a couple of zone two high cadence days and the, you know, the rest of it was really rest. I put on a kilogram but you can see there, while I wasn't feeling brilliant at the beginning, being fresh enabled me to have three good little punchy climbs at the leg snapper, and I reckon that's my best ever epic KOM. So Ed, Ed Mode, Lavarat Coaching, thank you very much. And thank you for kind of towing us back into contention. And, I'm gonna, I, I'm gonna do some filming tomorrow, so I'll have a few cracks of the hill there, but I won't crack up too much training intensity. Then I'll be sure to kind of stay fresh for the hill climb event. Hopefully beat Giorgio. I'm not sure about that, Giorgio. Your power is bigger than mine. Power to weight is bigger than mine. But, um, yeah, I was saying to, I was really, really nervous about this morning, and I was saying to myself, just trust in the training, trust in the recovery, trust in what Ed's telling you. And I've got to say, I didn't feel great in the warm up and initially in the race, I thought, oh my God, you're gonna do well just to stay in the bunch over the first leg snapper. And indeed, I did get dropped by two at the front as it happens. But let's just ignore that minor inconvenience. It just goes, and I've read lots of books about athletes saying you've got to trust in the training and trust in the coaching and all this kind of stuff. Hey Steve, how are you? So good to see you. But um, this is another real epiphany for me. I've had several epiphanies along the way with Ed, and this is another of them. So, um, Ed, thank you very much. Yeah, that's exactly right, John. You've got to go hard enough on the hard days but in order to do that, you've got to recover on the soft ones. And that's Ed's kind of ethos, certainly for polarized. But obviously when you've got a different event like the Mamot or something like that, you've got to do a lot more sweet spot and build the long engine. It is sometimes hard to trust the process, Giorgio. And actually you are the epic over trainer from what I can see in your videos. Giorgio's videos are really good. He is a strong, strong lad on the bike and off it. Beautiful form in the gym. You know, he can run well. Um, weightlifting is impeccable. 
in terms of squat and deadlift form, this kind of thing. Lots of glute work as well. Sarah and Georgia are big advocates of the glute and the hamstring. And I promise you, if you build the glute and the hamstring, you will get stronger. Giorgio will bear testament to that. But also, he does a lot of volume. And so you're definitely the guy, Giorgio, on YouTube, um, that I reckon you get even stronger with a bit more rest. <laughs> yeah, that's right, Paul. It is great weather uh, for the indoor today. The Ferrari, I've actually um, shipped up to a storage place in St. Albans where it's just gonna hibernate over the winter. I've got to be honest with you, I love my Ferrari. I'm not going to get rid of it. I love it. But if I had to choose between the bike and the Ferrari in terms of what really brings me the most joy, the bike, every time. And I don't mean the Camargo or the Villier whenever it arrives. I just mean being on a bike, whether it's an indoor trainer or an outdoor one, and smashing it. That's where I get my real pleasure. And I'm going through a little process at the moment, as it happens, Paul, of, um, I don't know if any of you watched... Um, the life-changing magic of tidying, Con Marie. Um, in 2017, I read the book and we came back and we kind of culled loads of possessions in the house. You touch every possession you have, like I touch this computer, does it bring me joy? Yes, it's what I use for YouTube, live streaming and building a community. But say I touch, I don't know, my Land Rover um, Defender, it doesn't bring me joy. Not at all, it's a beautiful car. Bring loads of people joy, it didn't bring me joy. So I pulled the plug and got rid of it. Um, and I'm going through a little bit of a process of that in a moment. Getting rid of what's unnecessary in life. The Ferrari still brings me joy. But this what bike, boy does this bring me joy. Anyway, sorry I'm getting a bit deep here. Hibernating the Ferrari, yeah it's a very well treated Ferrari. It's my garage queen, Niels. It's only done 28,000 miles. It's 25, 26 years old now, gated shift. And I just had it detailed and all that kind of stuff. It just had it serviced, right? And this will, you know you're getting into this when you get into our Ferraris. And I did budget for it. But for the Ferrari, the old ones, you have to have the cam belt changed every three years, irrespective of mileage. They don't have a little hole or a lid or anything like that to get at the cam belt. You have to take the entire engine out. It's a 3,000 pound service just to change the cam belt. It's um, absolutely ridiculous. Oh yeah, the book, yeah, The Life Changing Magic of Tidying, Jane, Will, Will in there, it's Con Marie. And what you do is you get all your clothes, you stick them on the floor and every piece of clothing you touch, and if instantly you get a feeling of joy, you put it back in a wardrobe, but you put it back nice and neatly on a hanger so you can get at it. Anything where you're not sure about, or you say I haven't yet worn it, or maybe I'll wear it in the future, you either throw out, or you give to charity, or eBay, or something like that. And you do the same with all your books. You do the same with every possession you have. And it gets rid of everything. And then when you're left, what you're left with, you love. But because you've got so much less stuff, it's all easily accessible. It's folded nicely in drawers. You remember you've got it, you wear it, you enjoy it. And the moment it doesn't bring you joy, you get rid of it. And um, the, the flat has got a little bit full of kids stuff, my stuff, that kind of thing. So I'm going for a little um, clean up. Yeah, this concept is good, Giorgio. The life changing magic of tidy. On the back of that, another lady wrote a book called The Life Changing Magic of Not Giving a Fuck. Now I don't normally swear, but I'm one of these people that always tries to please other people. And much as I say, oh, I don't care about what X, Y, Z thinks, I do. So I read that book, and it's a very good book, but I haven't yet been able to implement that. Anyway, appreciate everybody tuning in today. Yeah, Marie Kondo, that's right, yeah. The life-changing magic of tidying, yeah. Cheers, Jane. The safer. <laughs> you got two use of the safer, but does it bring you joy, Paul, when you're on it? I bet it does, especially if you've got, um, I don't know what you're, whether you're a cookie man or a beer man or whatever, but lounging around on the sofa is gifting. Now, Giorgio, I see you in your videos, Giorgio. You do like a lounge on a sofa and plenty to eat. You got rid of 70% uh, of what's in the kitchen. Yeah, we did the same old slow in our kitchen. Got rid of 70%. Now I've got loads of supplements in there again. I'm a hoarder, um, so 
we're running them down, but I'm, I'm using them because I love them. I did say a no-no word, Niels, yeah. <laughs> I better say my Hail Marys. <laughs> but uh, couldn't get away from it. That's the book. I do swear in real life, but I don't like to, I don't swear profusely or anything like that. Occasionally I do swear, but um, I'm now rambling because I'm high on the uh, caffeine. But um, I don't like to swear on the YouTube channel because, I don't know, I don't think you need to. Anyway, you, you got rid of your cooker. Oh, Paul, Paul, I too have been divorced. Yes, not a good thing, is it? And indeed, as a single man, we don't make a great deal of use of the cooker. Microwave, I hope you've got. Um, and of course, the ready meal, <laughs> in it goes. Jane, actually, when she was in New York, right, she won't like me saying this, she worked for um, a bank in New York for a period of time. And they hired a flat for her when she was first over there before she got her own one. Oh, I think, actually, no, I think they hired it for two years for her, something ridiculous. It was a brand new kitted out sort of kitchen and it still had all the um, clean film and kind of plastics in the oven and the instruction manual. And when she moved out, <laughs> it was all still in there, two years later. But Jane is now actually a, a, a very, very good cook. I said, not very, very good actually, she's a good cook. She's not like as good as my mum. Um, sorry. <laughs> well, you, you're not as good as my mum, are you? But you're, you're better at many other things than my mum, aren't you? Yeah? Well, I don't know, I, I say it like it is. But she, I mean, Jane is calm and she's, <laughs> she's many, many things that my mum isn't, which is a good job. You wouldn't want to be kind of living with your mum, age 45. Anyway, I'm kind of, I am getting into difficulty. Jane is, but, but you know, Jane, my mum is a really good cook. What can I say? Um, anyway, single life is beckoning, yes. Anyway, probably time to shut the, uh, the chat down. <laughs> but I really appreciate everybody joining. Um, Giorgio, um, looking forward, hopefully, to racing you in Farnham. Chris Garinet. Hoping you get in as well. Paul Hamblet, I know you're not in the live chat, but um, I know you've entered too. Um, so fingers crossed, maybe we can have a little meet up and try that um, Pride of the Vale or whatever it is, uh, Hill. Hey Zach, yeah, I need to be careful what I say, yeah, yeah. It's all right, Jane knows I love her. Anyway, so, sorry, yeah, Stephen, yeah, I know. I'm now properly rambling, I'm in a lot of difficulty. Well, not a lot of difficulty, Jane's really calm, I'm not really in difficulty. Anyway, I'm gonna leave it. In the meantime, whoever you are and whatever you do, please remember to live, thrive and stay healthy. And thanks so much for everybody's support.